Well, how do there, chums, says I, Captain of the Steves. And today, chums, I'm not going to be talking about any conspiracy sorts of shizzle or anything like that. I'm just going to sit and have a little cup of tea with you. But I've been asked quite a few times now, after doing vlogs and things like that, Captain Steve, you always seem so happy, you're always so entertaining. I just want to talk a little bit about happiness and how I keep wellness inside of my head and keep myself afloat, even in times that are quite hard. As you know, I've just gone through a thing with my family, with my father, he, he had bowel cancer, quite a difficult moment in life. I carried on doing my content creation and done the best to keep my channel going. Of course, I've got a day job, which is quite a busy day job at that, people, but I managed to juggle all these activities and keep a healthy relationship. So I just thought I'd give you a little bit of insight, a little bit of life tips, if I dare say that. I don't know whether I'm the best person to do life coaching or life tips, but I'm always asked, Captain Steve, how comes you're always so happy? Anyway, so that's what today's episode is about. Hopefully you're going to stick around for it. Anyway, you can have a little tip of um, my copy, because that helps. This is hot beverages. Hot beverages, tip number one. If, if you're stressed out and you just need a little bit of time just to think about things before you put a reply out there that you might regret or something like that, whether that be on the Tinter web or even a phone call or something like that, take a deep breath, make yourself a hot beverage if you can. Get my Captain Steve's brew tea because it's thoroughly relaxing, it's awesome. Anyway, this isn't that, this is a coffee actually, this is a cappuccino. Very nice, cappuccinos. I'll take a mouthful of that after I do each tip, have a little bit of a breather. Anyway, so firstly is try to surround yourself with positive people. I mean, you might have one negative Nelly inside of your friend circle. We all have one of those. You know, normally they're people that you want to try and help fix, but no matter how much you try to fix them, it's very difficult to fix them. Sometimes people see these people as sort of energy vampires because you put so much freaking energy of your own into trying to help them out. It, it can suck your own sort of life force away. You need to try to set balances for that sort of thing. You know, don't don't go too out of your way to do things. See if they're actually making efforts themselves to improve themselves. Oh, and that's another thing about comparison, comparing yourself to others. Oh, let's hold on to this. Now, I'm just going to say, if I was to compare myself to somebody like, you know, Jason Plays or um, other content creators that have quite a lot of um, you know, subscribers and views to their videos, I don't overly do that. I don't look at other people's channels and go, oh, maybe I should do content like that. Maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do that. When comparing to other people. I kind of look at my own content and think, how can I improve my own content? Sometimes I might take some inspiration from other people, but it's about shaping what I find entertaining. Try and be yourself. And I know that I've got like an online persona of, you know, Captain Steve, and I take things up a couple of octaves. But if you've met me in real life, or if you watch my vlog videos, that's pretty much how I am in real life. So when I first started this out, this venture, I kind of based myself on Matt Berry, you know, he's very cool, is Matt Berry, with some of the pronunciations to my words, like Nexias, you know, that sort of stuff. Baba, bat, that sort of stuff. If you've watched any of his IT crowd, you'd know where oh, my baba comes from. I guess that's at the funeral of his dad. You know, that sort of stuff. So I do put some sort of little nuances on there, but I, I like Matt Berry. But also the tick, you know, like chums. You are the chum. Yeah, that's from the tick. This uh, it's a it's an old cartoon, but it got made into a live action that I really liked. Anyway, TV shows and comedy, light humour, that helps lift you up a bit. But having your own sort of sense of purpose online and not trying to copy another content creator is also something that I find is quite useful. Anyway, not all of you are content creators. You want tips, life tips that make you feel happy in day-to-day -day life. I get onto those right now. Let me just take a little sip of this. So I did mention about, you know, trying to keep a positive friend circle. But it's not only that. The only people's opinions that overly matter to you, or should matter to you, are the people that matter to you. Anybody that doesn't matter to you, or a complete stranger, their opinions don't matter. And I know that's hard for some people to grasp. They don't matter. The people that matter is your employer, your direct manager, your boss, and those that you work around, if you, you know, if you want a career. Your family, your friends, and your loved ones, and your direct family. They're the people that really matter. 
to me also the other people that matter are my backers and members you know i always take their opinions to heart it's like i did i did a video just the other month on the new world order wars the alex jones game and a few of my members came to me and said captain steve this is a real disappointment to see you do this uh, because of who Alex Jones is, not because of the actual game and the fact that you can take it to the elite. Heck yes, which is freaking fun times. And they know how much I like conspiracies anyway. But yeah, I, I took it down from YouTube. So, you know, I, you've, got to, you've got to respect people. And respect cuts both ways. If you give people respect, respect should come back. Or you shouldn't expect it, but hopefully it does come back, basically is what I'm saying. And I think that plays a massive part into things too, is is that, is mutual respect. But not only that, but like I was saying though, back to the whole point of worrying about people's opinions. Yeah, you shouldn't get bogged down by people's opinions that you can't change either. You know, a lot of people are going to be set in stone what they believe and what they don't believe. And you're not going to be able to change those opinions either. Some of them are hardwired and hard grained. So don't overly fret. If, you don't need people to change their mind about you. If people have already set their opinion, just move on from it. It doesn't matter. You don't try and change people's mindsets. Don't try and change how they feel. Um, the only people that matter are the people in your friend circle. And I'm fairly sure if you spoke to people in your friend circle that know you well and love you or like you, they're going to come around to your way of thinking or at least say, you know what, yeah. That's fine. Yeah, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. And if people don't, and if people just tune in to attack you or just be in your life just to attack you and to be annoying, then they've usually got something against you personally. It's usually they've got their own jealousies or envies of you and your lifestyle or you and you as a person. And I, it's tricky that one because Sometimes you kind of feel empathy for them. You kind of feel, well, come on, lift yourself up. You can reach this plateau. You know, I've managed to get to where I am, so so can you. And you might want to try and help them, but that's when that whole thing of energy vampirism comes into play. You can only help people a certain amount of what way. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't force it to drink. That's a very true statement. So be careful of how far you take things, you know. If you're starting to stick straws in horses' mouths and force them... No. No. <laughs> They've got to do some of the work for them. Don't invest too much of your time if they're not willing to invest their time. Okay, so that's that's my biggest sort of takeaway. Is um, the people that want help are usually willing to help themselves a certain amount as well. Anyway, I'll have a little number six. Okay, so another big takeaway is living in the moment. Okay, so try to focus on the now, the things that are happening around you immediately now. Don't think too much about the past and, oh, what if I did this? Or what if I did that? Or if I did this differently, then maybe this outcome would have happened. Don't try not to do that because you can't change the past. Time travel has not been invented. It's not going to happen. And even if you could, would you? Because everything that's happened to you, good and bad, has shaped you as a person that you are today. Try not to have too much regret. Try not to focus on things that you can't do anything about and focus on the now. And why I'm saying don't focus too much on the future is focusing too much on the future can sometimes cause anxiety, especially in, oh, what if this happens and then I fail? Or what if that happens and this happens after that and then I fail? You know, that sort of stuff. You can think too far ahead and you can start creating problems that may not ever actually occur. So try to live more in the moment. I mean, yes, plan for the future. And oh, and if you are to set life goals, it's like one of my life goals is to hopefully live six months here in England and six months over in the Philippines as the end goal. Ivy's got her family there, they're not getting any younger. I've got my family here, they're not getting any younger. As you know, my dad's just had complications. Ivy's family, they might have future complications. And it'd be nice to have maximum amount of time split between our parents, you know? So Ivy gets that same bond that I'm getting here. So that's all I want, is equal equal sort of life paths for me and Ivy. This, this is my goal, okay? You've probably got your own goals that are just as freaking difficult to achieve. Now, I've fixed my mortgage for five years. I've invested in a condo that should be built within five years. 
Now, at the end of the, this five-year period, we're already like in, we're all made, we've already done the year one, so we've got four years left to go, essentially. But this interest rates are still super high. You know, that's going to affect my mortgage. Um, I might not be able to afford to live in England. But this is the things that I'm saying don't get anxious about. It's okay to be conscious of them. Just don't dwell on them, because a lot can change in four freaking years. So I'm not going to get anxious about it right now. It's just there. It's in my thought patterns. If England goes to shite, and if interest rates continue to raise, I'm probably going to sell the house here, completely pay off the condo, invest more in the Philippines, and then rent something here. Go small, you know? Or if interest rates do drop, and I can afford my mortgage here, I carry on as life as we know it, you know? And then we're trying just to extend it holidays in the Philippines, and each year maybe build it out a bit bigger, see if I can take my work laptop, see if I can negotiate more time with my boss, and, and see if we can be there for six months. The goal might not ever happen, but that's what I would like to happen. So in five years' time, rather than saying if it hasn't happened, I've failed, all I'm going to do in five years' time is review where I am and how close I am to that goal. And then maybe set another five-year plan. Maybe redo my mortgage, maybe look at where I am on condo investments, see if I can Airbnb it, and then might have to put another five-year sort of review point on that dream. You know, don't ever set a, a, a hard date on when you want to achieve a goal by. Or if you are to set a hard date, it's a review date. Review how far you are to your dream and to your goal. And hopefully it aligns with your partner as well. Because that's another thing we're going to come on to is partners in a second. So yeah, me and Ivy, we're like chalk and cheese. Completely freaking different. But where we're not different is where our goals and dreams lie. We know what we want out of life, and we've got very similar life expectations and, and dreams, like to the 60-60% split. When it comes to children, she's already got her, her son. I would love a, I'd love a child of my own, but at the same time, I'm getting a little bit old for that now. But if we are doing that six months in the Philippines, six months here, there is a chance that we could go out to the Philippines and perhaps even take on like a foster child or adopt one. You know, that's a little bit older. I'm not in... I'm, I think I'm too old now for sleepless nights and nappy changing and doing all this content creation and things like that, having a kid in the background could sort of scupper that. I know that's a little bit of a weird thing to say, but if I want this to be my only source of income one day, you know, that'd be lovely, and, and to give up day jobs, that'd be freaking lovely. But it might not ever get to that. You know, YouTube itself as a platform is changing rather rapidly, especially in the last three years. Censorship is being ramped up to the frickin' nines, and what you can and can't do on YouTube is turning it from YouTube into CorpTube, basically. All the corporation seems to have a voice here, you know, like all the news channels, the Foxes, the NBCs, and all that sort of stuff. And all the independent news is being censored, and the only thing that is going up on YouTube now is things that seems to be completely family friendly. The whole you in YouTube is slowly being sucked out, and now they want to turn it into TikTok. So you know, <laughs> I don't want to go too much up on that one, people. But at the same time, I'm just saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket. I've diversified my channel. Um, I've now duplicated my channel over on the likes of Rumble, just in case. It's okay to plan for issues rather than just ignore them and say, well, I'm not planning for the future. Have sub plans, obviously, you know, safety nets are always good. Anyway, back to partners. So Ivy and I, chalk and cheese, like I mentioned. Dreams, almost aligned, which is great. But not only that, Ivy makes me smile every day without even realizing she's making me smile. She looks after me in, in ways that I don't look after her, and I look after her in ways that she doesn't look after me. And that sort of works, you know, that, that sort of melds together and it all meshes together. So, and we've also got one joint hobby. She loves doing vlogs because her family can see all of her vlogs over in the Philippines. She can see what she's doing activity wise and all that sort of stuff. It gets us out of the house, seeing new places. I teach her some video editing skills, IT skills, editing skills, all that sort of sh shenanigans. She te teaches me more person personable sort of skills, how to approach different angles with cameras and, and views and all that sort of stuff. And we work really well together. We help each other grow. Next off is I'm going to jump back to um, comparisons, like trying to compare yourself to others. So I've got two brothers 
And I've also got close friends, best friends, things like that, people in my friend circles. And it always feels like they're in slight competition with me. Uh, you know, if I get a new car, they get a new car. Or if I move house, they move house, that sort of stuff. I always think, you know, sibling rivalry or friends and family that have got that sort of sense of rivalry. It's all well and good. It's all fine. It's all cool. I very rarely do that, though. If I see somebody's got something new, I'm like, oh, good for you. Cool. Uh, but I get it when I'm ready to get it, you know, and I don't force myself to get it or put myself into debt trying to meet what they've done, you know. And I would say always compare yourself to yourself. That's the best comparison. Am I doing better than I was last year? If I'm not, you know, what's going wrong there? You know, so say if it's work, for example, yeah. Don't go and think, oh, well, my brother's on 50 grand, I want to be on 50 grand, or so-and-so's on 60k, I, want, I need to be on 60k. No, just look at where you are in life, you know, if you're on 30,000 a year or whatever, and you go to see your boss and you go for your appraise, and they say, yeah, we're going to give you a 5% uplift. Brilliant! Freaking awesome! You're doing better than you was last year, you know? If you go to your boss for the, your appraisal and they say, you've done fantastic this year, you've hit all your measures, but there's just not enough money to give you a pay rise, you know, we're really sorry. And then a couple of days later, you hear that one of your friends in the same team as you did get a pay rise. Then something's not quite right there. You know, maybe there's a reason why you don't get a pay rise. Maybe it could be the hierarchy. Maybe it's time for you to look to move on. I used to have a rule that if I didn't actually get a promotion at work or I got looked over for being given a pay rise or something like that, or I wasn't getting any thanks for the job that I was doing, and I was doing it for three years, then it's time to move on. A lot of the time you're being taken advantage of, it's time to move on. Give a job a three year shout, mainly because it looks great on your CV. It shows perseverance. It shows that you're a good sound investment. You're not gonna just jump ship willy nilly. You're willing to give it a try. And three years I think is a safe try, you know? So that's a bit of professional advice. But at the same time, when it comes to comparing yourself, compare yourself to yourself and then you can't get too far wrong because hopefully you're going to be making small improvements in multiple areas and you can say you know what Steve you've done good this year you're doing better than you did last year who cares if you find that you're not doing better than you was the year before then it's probably a time to reassess your goals and change your outlook and maybe even change your life around a bit you know you only get one shot at this so you know be prepared to mix it up a little bit. Have a few safety nets if you can. But yeah, take a few brave steps every now and again. If you're not getting out of life what you want out of life, it's time to look at why you're not making those um, changes or improvements to where you were the previous year. And why I say year is it's far easier to compare yourself year to year than comparing yourself month to month because we all have a little bit of peaks and troughs through the year. Don't overpressure yourself month to month. You know, if I looked at my analytics on YouTube month to month, of course, my analytics are fine tuned to whenever there's an update to No Man's Sky. So, you know, I very rarely look at my stats month to month. I mean, yes, I do, but I, I don't overly think anything of it because that could just you know, lead to ill health. You know, you don't want to worry about every little blip inside of a year. Just wait till you get to the year and assess the year as a whole. Especially when you have years like we had two years ago when the whole freaking you know thing was going on. Yeah, write that year off. That one don't count. And any other year that's a bit like that, you know, if you have a family tragedy or something kick off inside of your life, you know, that one doesn't count. Write it off because it's a learning experience. It makes you a more solid person, but if you're trying to compare yourself to the year prior and you know, you've lost someone near and dear to you that's just knocked you for freaking six, that year don't count. Knock it out, you know? It, it, that one was to just build up some new foundations. That's to build a bit of vigor for your next freaking year, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, don't let it knock your wind out of your sails. See it as strengthening of character, you know, at bad years. Anyway, so that's, that's my main takeaways. So yeah, invest your time in people that care about you and respect you and give them the same sort of stuff back. Treat people how you want to be treated. Only worry about people's opinions that you care about and you love and you like. Set yourself some decent role models. That's something that I haven't really mentioned. I mean, well, actually I did. You know, I like Matt Berry and I like The Tick. 
and both of them are fictional characters. <laughs> a little bit of Matt Berry there. You know, but I also sometimes occasionally stick in a little bit of uh, Jeremy Clarkson. That was the best game in the world. You know, that sort of stuff, you know. Yeah, have a bit of fun with it, people. You know, have a little bit of fun with your own character building. And if you do want to embellish bits of some great people or role models, it can't hurt, you know. Especially if they're good role models. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much everything I've got for you. Set yourself goals, set yourself dreams, but don't really set end dates. Set review dates. Review where you are with that goal. And, you know, if, if your dream has changed, if you've got so far with it, there's no harm in climbing halfway up a ladder, seeing another ladder next to you and going, actually, that leads to a different point. But you know what? I'm going to swap ladders. There's no problems there. The problem is, if you're climbing up a ladder... And the destination that you're going to isn't somewhere that you want to be. It's like I mentioned that me and Ivy, our goals and our dreams align. Imagine if her goal was to have another child and mine isn't, you know, and I'm climbing halfway up to that ladder. I'm like, oh, cack. That's a ladder you really don't want to be on. And it's, that goes the same with jobs as well. If you're in a job where your next level of progression is a job that you really don't freaking want, you know, if it's management of a massive team, and you've got to go through that pain before you can get onto a ladder that you do want to be on, what happens if you get stuck managing that team? What happens if you get halfway up that ladder and then that's on your CV for freaking life? You know, that's, um, that's another thing. Don't go climbing ladders you don't want to be climbing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right, there you are. So there you go. I think that's pretty much everything that I've got for you in ways and means to keep yourself happy and savvy of mind and live in the moment. Living in the moment is, is a really big one because if you're thinking about things you could have done differently in the past or you're worried about things that might happen in the future, these are the things that keep you awake at night. These are the things that give you repetitive thoughts in your head. These are the things that can make you feel very mentally unwell. So I, I know as hard as it sounds, Make yourself a Captain Steve's brew. <laughs> Shameless plug. Yes, it is actually really tasty. Take a breather. Take a take a break and reassess things. You know, just sort of even even step back a bit, or even sit down with your partner and say, look, you know, this is where I am in life. If you was me, what would you do? You know, uh, and and talk to your partner. At the end of the day, it's a partnership. Uh, that's, it's in the freaking name, partner. Share your problems with your partner. Never be afraid to put your thoughts and feelings out there with your partner and invite them to do the same. And have that two-way communication with your partner. Your partner in life, your companion, companionship is extremely important to being happy. Never take your partner for granted. Never take that companionship for granted. Work on it every day and see how you can strengthen that partnership and companionship. You know, every night if you can try to have one holiday a year and sit down and actually say the places that you most like to go the top three places you most want to see and see if they're top three if there's anything in their top three that matches your top three you know and then sit and watch a few touristy videos on their top three and your top three because it might be that your top three changes into their top three or their, their three changes into yours and you find somewhere that you really want to go and see together and then it's a joint venture Try to sort of adopt that into pretty much everything that you do. You know, even if you're going to go buy a new dishwasher, sit down and watch videos on freaking dishwashers, top three videos on dishwashers, and say, okay, which one did you like out of those three? Well, I like this one for these reasons. It's got a freaking stainless steel interior, not plastic. You might have to pay an extra hundred quid, but at least our dishes are going to smell nicer and it's not going to stink every time you open it. You know, that sort of stuff, because there's nothing, there's nothing worse then going, right, I'm going to surprise my missus. You go and buy a dishwasher, you get it all installed. She comes home from work, opens it and goes, it's freaking plastic inside. And you're like, I went to all this effort to surprise you and you're not happy. I know, I know you might want to surprise people, but sometimes it's better to get it right than to surprise somebody and get it wrong. I've learned from that when I bought that bedspread. If you haven't seen me buy the bedspread, it's freaking hilarious. But at the same time, it's not on our bed anymore, I'll put it that way, but it made a funny video. I'll put a link up there. <laughs> Go watch that. In fact, I'll put the whole playlist of mine and Ivy's life vlogs because I think they're fun. And I think it'll give you an idea of what our life is like because we share the goods and the bads. A lot of it is good because we've got it. We've got it good, people. We've got it good. We've got the recipe working well. 
So yeah, hit on up that vlog. Hopefully it puts a smile on your face and hopefully you're going to tune in for more of our vlogs. You know, I'm not just a gaming channel anymore, people. You know, and again, this comes down to me saying about having dreams and focuses and, and think about where you can shift things. I started life as a gaming channel. I've now got Captain Steve Talks, Captain Steve Vlogs, and I'm thoroughly enjoying, enjoying those two avenues. And I really hope you guys as viewers are going to enjoy those too. And when you see them pop up, think, eh, it's not really what I want to watch, but yeah, let's give it a chance and hit it up. Anyway, people, thank you very much for your time today. Hopefully that's helped you with some of your own sort of life sort of hurdles, because let's face it, we all have them from time to time. And I hope me sharing this... Even though it feels obvious to me, it might not be obvious, obvious to some of you. There might be some people that have found this really helpful. And if you have, I can do some more of these. But that's pretty much, it's just fairly simple, really. When you when you boil it down, it's just a few different points that I keep to heart. If you've got any that you feel that I've missed, put them in the comments. What makes you happy? Is there a recipe? Is there a simple thing that you do? A simple hack that's legal? <laughs> yeah, that's legal. Okay, put <laughs> it in the comments. Till next time, people. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.